Welcome to the Way of Biohacking, brought to you by Key Body and Spirit. This is Dr. Tay, and this is. Hey everyone, it's Nikki. I am back in studio. It's good to be back. And Linda has gone away to Costa Rica. She is assisting her yoga teacher for the 200 hour uh, yoga certification that she's been helping. So I believe she's going to come back with the yoga glow that she was famous for last year. <laughs> she yeah, had this glow. She's like, I'm definitely pretty jealous. Uh, I follow her on on Instagram and everything, and she showed like this papaya. And like, I recently got into eating papaya. There's a lot of benefits of papaya enzymes and things like that help digest proteins. Yeah, and it just looked so good. And I was like, that's probably like the best papaya you'll ever eat is one right from Costa Rica. Well, last year when she was there, she was drinking like smoothies every day that was from different things, and yeah, like. I wish I was there doing some yoga retreat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. I would love to go to Costa Rica. And Nikki, you finished your semester in school, right? I did. I, I just finished uh, in May. In May. Mm -hmm. And how is it now that you're back? You know, it's it's nice having everything be familiar mm -hmm. at school. You know, I'm always seeing new roads and places like that. Yeah. But here, like, I kind of know. Like I see places and I okay I've been there. It's yeah. it's nice to have everything be so familiar to me. Uh, okay, okay, okay. All right. So today's topic is a topic that Nikki is well versed in. I like to think so. <laughs> he uh, he researched it a lot for the uh, TikTok videos, I believe, <laughs> and like the way he does it is super cool. Uh, so please check us out on TikTok. Um, all right. Let's get you started. So today's topic is going to be optimizing testosterone in men, optimizing testosterone in general, but uh, fertility in men as well, optimizing sperm count, and we'll start it off with the dietary. Yeah. Uh, what type of foods do you recommend for people to um, well, giving the base? I would say the foods to avoid mm -hmm. would be things that are in plastic. Okay. I don't. I completely remove. I try to completely remove plastic out of my life. It's really hard. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't find beef. I eat a lot of ground beef. You don't find beef not wrapped in plastic. Right. And uh, but things like water, I'll try to just drink uh, water in glass. Uh, I drink like Pellegrino, uh, Mountain Valley. Okay. And I'm really not a fan of plastic. It's been shown to to act as estrogen in the body, which is not what men want. Yeah, and uh, av I avoid I avoid soy completely. I don't eat any soy. It's also been shown to act as a phytoestrogen yeah. in the body, mm -hmm. and yeah, it's been shown in larger amounts to do that. You know, small amounts are probably harmless, but I still avoid it. I don't have a need to eat soy. I don't really crave tofu. You know, I don't really yeah. miss it, so I just avoid it. Like when I was a kid. Um I've seen people make tofu because, like, in in Korean culture, they make mm -hmm. tofu, and there's like whole wide variety of tofu. There's the soft tissue, soft tofu. There is hard tofu. There is medium sized tofu. I mean, medium like the the firmness of the tofu. And when you eat tofu like that is freshly made, and if you eat too much of it, you end up having diarrhea. Yeah. Um, and the reason why people eat tofu like that is because soy is very harsh on the digestive system so it's very hard to eat like soy like you know harvest it so they have to process mm. it and break it down so that it's more gentler but even then like it's really hard to like you know and as i was growing up uh, soy became like genetically modified right and a lot of the soy in this country is like you know it's not good for those reasons but you know more research came out that it was like mim mimicking estrogen mm -hmm. and it helps grow cancer so it's like a it's like a big no-no when it comes to uh soy but go on yeah and having lower uh, testosterone levels across the board will increase your likelihood of cancer it's been linked to yeah. to cancer so you want to have your testosterone optimized it's it's incredibly important for men and women uh, to sleep good and to avoid uh, disease but I mean I touched on sleep just now sleep's incredibly important 
for having your hormones regulated. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's it's really important. So optimizing your sleep, things like avoiding LED lights before bed. Uh, I have a red light. I've told mm-hmm. you about it. I would just put that on. It's on a 20 minute timer. When I'm getting ready for bed, I'll put that on as my room light. And then when that goes off, you know, I'll I'll go to sleep. But I, I no longer will use like my my overhead lights mm-hmm. when I'm like in my room about to go to bed. And I wear uh, I have all of my electronics on. Um, like a sleep mode uh-huh. that when the sun goes down it ca- it filters the blue light yeah. so it's like yellow lights yeah it's not as not yeah. as good for gaming uh-huh but yeah, 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 yeah. it's a sacrifice i'm willing to make oh uh, have you used uh photobiomodulation aka red light led lights yeah yeah i i, I use it uh every morning to, i didn't use it this morning okay because i woke up like an hour ago okay. so if i would have done it for 20 minutes i'd probably be late yeah but um I typically do it every morning, and I don't. I, I I usually use it on my testicles. It's been shown to yes, massively increase yes. testosterone by around two hundred percent in some subjects. Other subjects, it was uh, smaller. Can you describe the feeling? Because I do that for some of my patients in the office. It's pretty incredible. I actually got my my roommate from college. Uh huh called me like a week ago because I let him use it once. I was like, you don't believe me that it really makes you feel really good. And I was like, just go go in your room. And try it for 20 minutes. And he called me last week. He was like, you know, what's that light called? You know, I never told you, but that was that was really awesome. <laughs> and I sent him a, I sent him a link. But um, you feel you get this kind of head rush almost. Yes, it's pretty. Yes. It's pretty incredible. Yes. It's kind yes. of like yes. a shot of espresso. Yes. In the morning, when you feel that caffeine kick yeah. in, yeah. it doesn't last forever, but it's it's really interesting. You could feel your body kind of yeah. upping that that testosterone, maybe a little adrenaline. Yeah. So, and it's super awesome. so that is the hallmark sign of your testosterone going up mm-hmm. in a very short amount of time and photobiomodulation, the LED lights does happen. So I have the like the medical grade stuff in my office. Uh, I use it for weight loss, right? Uh, the LED lights work in a way so that the light when it hits the body, it creates a scenario for the body to produce more ATP through the Krebs cycle. So the LED lights uh, helps the body combine oxygen and fat and convert adenosine diphosphate, ADP, to ATP, adenosine triphosphate. And when this begins to occur on the superficial layer of the skin, skin tends to heal. Uh, it helps get rid of wrinkles. Uh, it helps realign the, what is that? Um, uh, the, the collagen the, the collagen yes thank you the collagen structure and when it's on the fat the fat cells that are alive it's like a garbage bag and it tends to like open them up right so you mm-hmm. can release more fat so it prepares your body to release more fat and when my friend told me about the led lights having this effect uh i started using it and the first thing i noticed when i got up there i felt a notice in my head yeah absolutely it's like yeah. very very noticeable yeah very very noticeable and i'm like wow this is this is pretty cool so and i know this works right because one i read the literature but i had a patient i have a lot of ladies coming in for fertility reasons so I do acupuncture and herbs and like teach them you know various things like breath work and the importance of stretching um uh, and one of the ladies uh, said, my husband has low testosterone, right? And I was like, all right. So, you know, things like walnuts really help, right? It helps people recover recover uh, for low testosterone. Uh, there is the deer antler. Uh, Lurong is a very young form. It mimics uh, testosterone really, like, strongly. And when you take it, you can feel, like, the warmth taking place in your lower abdomen. And... Before, you know, well, like when this guy came in, he was a fairly young guy, young couple. They were married. And um, so I put him on the LED lights. And after two sessions, he went, he went to go get a test. It was like 90% recover. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, those are pretty incredible. I definitely noticed uh, a, a difference in myself. Mm-hmm. I didn't think my testosterone was low, but just that extra like like boost in the morning yeah it feels so good and i mean red lights in general are are 
are a really useful tool for pretty much anything. Whenever I have some sort of inflammation, mm -hmm. I'll put my red light on it for 20 minutes yeah. and it, it, it really helps. And it's also been shown in some really solid literature that a uh, red light or uh, near infrared light positively, influ positively influences gut microbi microbia, yeah. microbiota. Yeah. So, uh, Sometimes I'll just put it on my stomach and I'll just leave it for 20 minutes. And it's been shown that, you know, I can penetrate that tissue yeah. to uh, positively influence good gut bacteria, kill off some bad. So that's pretty incredible. I mean, I think I spent like $130 on mine. Uh -huh. To me, you know, I use it every single day. I think that was money well spent. I think that was a good health investment. Was it a uh, light bulb or was it like an LED unit? It was kind of like a lamp. A lamp, kind okay. of like a lamp that doesn't have a stand. Okay, okay, I know what you're yeah, talking about. Yeah. It I, was I, by a True Light, True True Light. Yeah, I use um, Ruby Lux. Mm -hmm. I think that's the brand that I use for the light bulb. The machine I get from the uh, acupuncture like supply uh, places, but uh, the ones that are, the light bulb that I like uh, to have that effect is called Ruby Lux. Right, and you could get that on Amazon and stuff like that. I would love to when I'm older just have like a room where it's just like the Juve panels. Yeah, yeah, around, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would just walk in completely naked. There's a lot of biohackers who mm -hmm. promote that. And then, like, if you're a biohacker and you have a podcast, they yeah. send you these things so that you can promote it on their um, podcast and stuff like that. So send us, <laughs> Juve, send us some, get in contact with us. <laughs> and what is that? Uh, what I want people to understand about the red light is that there is a carrying capacity. Um, so, like, a lot of these biohackers, when I heard them talk about it, like, you know, I didn't want to go to a party and, like, you know, everyone's talking about it. And then they're like, oh, yeah, you know, I, I used the thing, you know, they're like, I'm like, oh, that's really cool. They're using this stuff. And you don't want to be the guy to, like, say they're, what they're doing is wrong, right? But I didn't point it out at a party because, like, I didn't want to be that guy. But um, a lot of people wants to be in the red light all day long yeah it's at 20 minutes yeah 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 there is a carrying capacity mm -hmm. meaning depending on the intensity of the light right uh once your body absorbs it uh after a while it doesn't have that effect anymore mm -hmm. so people like they blast on their body like for four or five hours yeah. not knowing the intensity and i thought that was like and it's kind of hard to say because you don't know the intensity mm -hmm. um of the light the one I have, uh, theoretically, it does it in four minutes. Yeah, it does oh, it. Wow. In, yeah, it does Mine it in four minutes. Mine has a twenty-minute timer, so I just hit it on, and yeah. it'll automatically shut off in, in twenty minutes. So I just do that. I'll yeah. just do the whole twenty. And uh, yeah, and I don't want people to like you know go on it and like spend so much time. It's good to know the intensity and mm -hmm. the duration of. So you have your own little formula, right? right? Uh, I set the machine for 10 minutes, but I usually run it twice because like, you know, when a guy pays like, you know, 75 bucks to come to my office right, and right. I do it for four minutes and like, okay, you're done. <laughs> yeah. Right. It kind of yeah. like, you know, like you hear the crickets like <laughs> sounding. So I'm like, all right, let me, let me hook you up and <laughs> do it one more time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, it's not. <laughs> yeah. But uh, going back to dietary, um, I forgot to mention cholesterol, getting dietary cholesterol and dietary saturated fat is crucial for testosterone production if you're eating low cholesterol it's not impossible you know your body makes its own cholesterol but it's really hard to produce testosterone well when you're not eating a lot of dietary cholesterol along with saturated fat cholesterol is a backbone for pretty much all of our hormones uh, mm -hmm. the glycerol backbone and it's it's really important to eat a little bit of those, you know, egg yolks. I eat, I eat a lot of egg yolks. I probably eat like nine a day, eight a day. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's very important to, to get that dietary saturated fat as well. It's just as important as that cholesterol. And I mean, one thing, a lot of people are on statins. Mm -hmm. It's the most prescribed drug in the United States currently. Yeah. And they have a variety of effects on your health. They're very good at lowering cholesterol. But with that cholesterol being lowered, they're very good at decreasing testosterone greatly. Right. Statins have been shown to massively decrease testosterone. And they've also been shown... Uh, I don't like statins. They've mm -hmm. also been shown to uh, to promote neuron death 
in the brain. Yeah. I wrote a paper on this in school. Statins, they're very good at what they're told to do. They're okay. very good at lowering cholesterol. Yeah. Is that a good thing? I would argue no. I would argue that the root cause of heart disease is metabolic dysfunction, but statins are really good at lowering cholesterol, which means that they're very good at lowering testosterone. So if you're on statins, you should probably be upping your dietary cholesterol if you want to keep your... This is not medical advice. If you want to up your testosterone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, one of the other things that people want to pay attention to is re increasing your DHEA levels. DHEA is a molecule that is yeah. precursor to all other hormones. And in order to create that, uh, you need to have like really good fats. And when I have you know very skinny... Uh, ladies that are trying to get pregnant, I always tell them like, "Look, you gotta you gotta fatten up. Mm -hmm. Like like you know whatever you're doing, you're not eating enough, and you're moving around too much, or you're thinking too much, or whatever it is, you need to eat more." And so like I tell them like, you, you like in those situations, you end up giving people bad advice. <laughs> uh, so I tell them like, "Hey, you know, uh, increase your sugar things and stuff like that," and. Once they fatten up, they have an easier time getting pregnant because mm -hmm. their body is, you know, has all that cholesterol to make good hormones. Um, all right. Like, I really want to talk about what not to do. And I think you went off like this, this whole like mm -hmm. um, lifestyle changes that you yeah. made. Right. Like, I want to hear more about that. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mentioned earlier. Yeah. This is something I recently saw, but polyester underwear yeah uh polyester when it's directly on testicles has been shown to decrease sperm count okay. so i bought 100 percent cotton underwear that's all i wear now and it's cheaper cotton is cheaper than polyester i might not feel as comfortable you know polyester when it's like tight yeah it feels nice but uh i'd rather have a higher sperm count than wear polyester underwear. So I save money and I save yeah sperm. Some sperm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, men are not supposed to wear tidy whities right? You know that, right? Mm -hmm. The yeah, I can't breathe. Yeah, the scrotum. The temperature is lower than the rest of the body, and the reason why when it's cold, the scrotum like comes up mm -hmm. to the body is because it's trying to keep itself warm, mm -hmm. so it doesn't get too cold. But when it's hot, it just hangs. <laughs> So it's like a temperature regulator mm -hmm. in terms of like the firmness and the softness, the way it hangs. And what is that? If you wear tight underwear, you get your scrotum to be always attached to the body and they begin to, you know, die. Right. And if you stay in, what is that? Like saunas for extended period of time. That's like the downside of yeah. saunas and mm -hmm. stuff like that for men. Yeah. I'm a bigger fan of, of cold. Mm -hmm. uh, I've recently bought a... Uh, like a camping bathtub and I okay. fill it with ice and okay. water and I've been doing it like three, four times a week. No, that's yeah, awesome. It's so fun. I got a few of my friends to come and do it. I, t I have a few videos. I'll show you. Okay. I'll show you after, but it's so much fun. That's also good for uh, hormone regulation, the cold, uh, extreme cold for a small period. I only do two minutes, but it's good for everything. I don't really know what it's not good for. How much ice do you use? I get a 16 pound bag. 16 pound bag. Okay. Yeah, and it's it's a small tub. Mm -hmm. So um, 16 pounds is like perfect. Really? Yeah, I fill it up like halfway, then I put the ice, and then I let it fill up a little more. Uh -huh. But it feels so great. It feels oh, so nice, great. I'm like nice, obsessed nice. with it now. Like, I'm like addicted. <laughs> cold exposure? Yeah, because my, my showers, I usually take cold showers, but my showers, like in the summer, they don't really get too cold. Yeah. So I have to, I have to improvise a little mm. bit mm. <laughs> love it love it love it all right um aside from that like um these there's so many chemicals around our you know that affects our body mm -hmm. in a negatively way and for me it was sad when i learned about perfumes and uh, cologne for men were huge uh, hormone disruptors like that when I re started really reading the literature and I think after that literature I read in grad school I literally went to my 
two colognes that I had. And I picked them up, put them into the garbage can. Yeah. And I was like, oh my god, this is this is horrific. And I think it was like a mental thing. And every time I smell it, right, I'm like, oh, I, I like it's affecting yeah, my, like, it's affecting my hormones. So like, I don't want to be around it. Mm -hmm. So in clinic, there was a rule. Um, you're not allowed to wear cologne and perfume because some people are very highly affected by it. And it created like a safe space. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when new students that just came into the uh, that space and they were perfume and cologne, like the teachers would be like Nazis about it. Mm -hmm. Like you can't wear this, you can't come into clinic. Like wow. you're gonna get, or so I was like, okay, I don't even have to say these things, but it's just happening. So a lot of like medical places, like the staff is, are told not to wear it. So that's like a cool uh, feature of um, medical space that they, they prevent that people is, from wearing. That is pretty you know. cool. And I, I didn't know that, but yeah, uh, perf perfumes and uh, a lot of body washes, anything that has fragrance, the ingredient fragrance, yeah. there's like a ton of chemicals that can be... Uh, called it like, can be classified under fragrance so anything that says fragrance i i won't buy it i use uh i use bergamot yeah essential oil it smells yeah. like cologne yeah i just well, i didn't put it on today but just like one spray and um i think it's fine it's just all natural stuff and for soap a lot of body washes and shaving creams yeah and stuff they all have the same uh the same uh fragrance ingredient so i avoid those as well i have like natural shaving cream mm -hmm. and i use dr bronner's soap yeah it's good stuff and you dilute it with water so at a big bottle it's pretty expensive but it lasts a few months it, it lasts me a while since you dilute it so that's really i use that for pretty much everything yeah washing yeah uh dr bronner's soap like you ever read the bottle it's got yeah, all these it's like, like 18 and one it's pretty yeah. sweet it's only a few ingredients it's good stuff but like there's all these like cool things written on the bottle about like saving the world mm. and like um it's very hopeful and inspiring mm. and and every bottle is different like what they write on oh, it really? yeah and i use the uh spearmint because like it helps cool my head you know when i'm taking yeah. the shower uh two i think the hemp uh, I'm beginning to like that fragrance a lot mm -hmm. more and more and more. Mm -hmm. um, and I've seen people use Dr. Bronner's soap for even dishwashers. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's like an all-purpose yeah. type of soap, and it's really good. And the, it smells good. Yeah, it's all natural. So we're not we're not sponsored, but <laughs> we should we we should be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and another thing, I, I recently um changed to. Uh, decrease my exposure to plastic is my toothbrush okay uh the gums absorb things very quickly yeah the gums absorb very fast so when you have plastic bristles and a plastic toothbrush and you got microplastics in your toothpaste and you're scrubbing and you're making little tiny scratches your yeah, gums yeah. are going to absorb all that plastic really fast so i now use a bamboo toothbrush okay with uh you know the, the bamboo bristles or whatever or bpa free bristles and um, I use charcoal toothpaste. Charcoal toothpaste. And it's okay. fluoride free. Fluoride free. So I'm trying to optimize things as best I can. Yeah. Of course, there's still it's in a plastic bottle, my toothpaste. So there's probably going to be a little bit of, of plastic in the toothpaste which I'll absorb. But you can't avoid plastic completely. It's such a big part of our lives now. Yeah. So just trying to minimize it, I'm sure will make a, a big difference. in. Like I started talking about fluoride toothpaste and pineal glands, right? Yeah, it and calcifies it. It calcifies yeah. it. And I've seen pictures of cadavers when they cut the person. Like like a lot a lot of modern people have that calcified. It's pretty bad. And people were like, Well, you gotta stop using, you know, this thing and then because like most people when they use like fluoride toothpaste, they don't feel the effects of it, right? Like yeah. that is the I mean I used fluoride toothpaste my whole life and I got plenty of cavities. So okay. I'm not entirely convinced that cavities are called by a f caused by a fluoride deficiency or that fluoride does much to prevent cavities i've had literally my entire bottom mm -hmm. on both sides i've had i have them filled okay from when i was a kid and i all i did was i brushed I, my parents always said like he brushes so well why okay. is he still getting cavities i was using fluoride toothpaste and they didn't they didn't stop any any cavities right and i now think that 
based off some stuff I've seen, cavities, the root cause of cavities might be deficiencies in fat soluble vitamins. Okay. Fat, uh, fat soluble vitamins being vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin K. Okay. And uh, looking back, you know, I probably, where was I getting my vitamin K2 from when mm-hmm. I was little, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vitamin D as well. I used to wear, I don't wear any sunscreen now. Yeah. At all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And good, I don't good, get good, sunburnt. Good. Good. I don't get good, sunburned. Good, I haven't gotten sunburned. You can see how tan I am. Yeah. I haven't gotten sunburned and I don't even know, but I don't wear any sunscreen. And as a kid, I did wear sunscreen. Now, if you're someone who burns a lot, yeah. Um, I would work on increasing your the strength of your skin barrier, decreasing your linoleic acid consumption. And but being getting sunburned definitely increases your risk of melanoma. Yeah. That's true. But being in the sun and not getting sunburn, yep. there's pretty much no correlation with not having sunburn and getting sun exposure and melanoma. Yeah. But there's definitely a correlation with sunburning and, and melanoma. So, but uh, wearing sunscreen inhibits your vitamin D production by like absorption by like 90%. So I probably had a vitamin D deficiency when I was little, mm. probably led to cavities. So it's interesting to see now you know how things have changed but they're still kind of pushing this oh fluoride 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 meanwhile yeah. i don't really think based on what i've seen that it helps with cavities all too much okay um now let's see uh, we went on a little dental hygiene tangent yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's see um we, we covered perfumes uh pineal gland mm-hmm. um the pineal gland helps regulate the um what is that uh dmt dmt all of these things uh it reg- also works with the hypothalamus uh to regulate the hormones this is a big part of the endocrine system um let's talk about uh do we cover food um i talked about cholesterol and saturated cholesterol? fat but specific foods you know joe rogan was on mm-hmm. on his podcast he was talking about a specific meat um elk meat yeah he, he loves he yeah, loves elk meat. yeah because it raises testosterone mm. and uh, my buddy jules uh was talking about it hey let's eat some uh, elk meat bro it's got testosterone joe rogan mm-hmm. was talking about it and i think he makes a good correlation like el- like elks are just like massive beasts that are muscular and they got swords in their heads coming mm-hmm. out right yeah and if you eat them i guess they're it gives you the ability to create that type of musculature because mm-hmm. they're like massive beasts uh and what is that like testosterone is also um it's considered like jing in eastern medicine right uh, which is the seed energy of who you are and if you look at the brain that's like all marrow right mm-hmm. uh because it's inside the bone so like you know how we have bone marrow inside of our bones well it's the biggest marrow in our structure and uh what is that if you were to um like eat things like walnuts because it looks like the marrow right it helps people you know recover uh some of their testosterone um i would i would argue that that's because of the saturated fat content okay okay that's what i would say okay that would make total sense yeah yeah um, the other thing is, what is that? Uh, yang food, foods that make you feel warm, um, but borderline spicy. Uh, that would be the category to, because in Chinese medicine, we call that tonify yang category. And for men, if you like eat a lot of yang foods, it helps do that. Um, this is the top, this is one thing that we uh, always talk about uh, in this podcast about doing squats. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Certain yeah. exercises, yeah. and specifically the quadriceps and the glutes, exercising yeah. those muscles have been linked to increase in testosterone. testosterone. And ladies, um, if you do squats and your body produces testosterone, and your body is different than men's, so it's going to auto-regulate and it's going to up the estrogen mm-hmm. to balance it out. Mm-hmm. And if you look at like a lot of the... Uh, what is that TV show? Uh, this was w- way back in uh, on HBO. It was a show called Spartacus, right? And it was about these gladiators and stuff like that. But to be on that show, people looked super fit. 
uh, and there was this YouTube video that went like really famous of this uh, personal trainer. I think he's the guy who created the Spartacus workout. And the Spartacus workout, if you look at the beginning, it starts with squats, right? And then he's doing the mountain climbers, which is like squats and glutes. Mm -hmm. And like knowing the science and watching it and not knowing it, you're like, oh, it's just ex these exercises that is, you know, high intensity interval training. But like people who possess the knowledge about how like exercise affects the hormones, like that's what you're doing. They're raising, you know, a lot of testosterone in a very short amount of time. And the exercise ends with like within 25, 30 minutes, which is a perfect time because mm -hmm. if you go beyond that, yeah. you're burning up hormones for the exercise. Yeah. I typically keep my workout routine like 30 minutes, yeah. maybe a little longer yeah. sometimes, but I don't work out for a long time. My friends are like, oh, like you're already back from the gym. Like that's it. Yeah, but yeah. if you're not shorter, it's better to do a shorter, you know, heavy lifting exercise than drag it out long. You'll actually degenerate muscle you can overuse muscles like you can overrun you can you can blow out your knees from running too much you know running is a little running is good but running you know tons of marathons you'll yeah. you'll destroy your knees it's the similar similar concept with weightlifting you can overdo it if you do it for too long in one sitting yeah so um 25 minutes of doing like good levels of squats um butt exercises and what else? What else can we add? <sighs> Sorry, I'm You're, tired. Yeah, yeah. This, um, it's an early morning. To you guys, it's just the same podcast that you guys are watching, but we're up at 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. I was up at 6.30. Cause, 6.30. But it's, we started this at 7.30. Um, I had some type of dietary thing that I don't exactly remember. But it was a dietary. Yeah, but avoid, avoid plat. I think the biggest one right now. Yeah. That's currently, you know, if you look at men's testosterone over the past 100 years, it's a graph that looks like this. Yeah. Which is terrifying, and I think the one of the biggest culprits for that is how how much we use plastics. If you look back in the 80s, in any 80s movie, TV show, everything's in glass, orange juice, Coca Cola. Yeah. You know, not that Coca-Cola is all that great to drink, but it's all glass. And it's so much better. And I remember what I was going to say earlier. One thing that I think I was wrong in before mm -hmm. is ketosis. Okay. You would think that eating a lot of fat and all that stuff would be, you know, you optimize your, your testosterone. But long-term ketosis, and I was in ketosis for like two years. Okay. I'm not anymore. I eat a lot of fruit. I was in ketosis for two years, and it's been linked that long-term ketosis is pretty bad for your testosterone levels. If you look at any of these, uh, the keto guys on yeah. YouTube, and you see their blood work, yeah, their testosterone levels are really low. Right. Really low. Pretty much all of them. Yeah. And uh, you know they, they'll make the argument that maybe they're more sensitive to it. Which might be true. I don't know. Like, like they might become more sensitive to it, but ketosis long term definitely decreases your testosterone, and it also will will uh, decrease your uh, your mineral content. You'll lose a good amount. Of, you won't be able to absorb as many electrolytes and minerals. That's why you'll see a lot of ke ketosis uh, people that are into keto. They'll be uh, magnesium deficient, things like that. Yeah. Um, if you look at a lot of the ketogenic diet like the science of ketogenic diet and then right, the way it's being used right now is so wrong because people use it as a weight loss yeah i think it's a i think it could be used cyclically in yeah a cycle yeah you know it doesn't it kind of makes sense to be in ketosis in the winter you know if i was say some sort of caveman in the winter i wouldn't be eating many carbs the fruit would be out of season you know you bring a very interesting and point. then come spring yeah oh the fruit's back in season yeah you would kind of be out of ketosis i think as a cycle it makes sense but long term over years at a time i don't i don't know i don't think it makes as much sense so there was a study in america africa and some other places where people eat based on according to the seasons 
and they would check their stool samples uh, versus the people who lived in cities like New York and London and stuff like that. And the stool samples would be able to, you would be able to see the, the microbiome content. And during the springtime, I forget the name of the bacteria. Uh, there's two major ones. One helps you digest uh, plant material, right? The other one was proteins and fats. And without the food being introduced first, the microbiome would change on its own. So when you were saying like the sun uh, affecting the microbiome to a certain extent, I think I am guessing now, right? I would guess that the elevation of the sun, depending on the where you are, that would determine, give a signal for your body to start changing the microbiome. Uh, so this is one of my guesses about it. And going back to uh, what, how you eat according to the seasons, right? Yeah, I think you're totally right. Um, I think during the winters, you should be eating more like, you know, animal matter, like eating more towards bone broth because mm -hmm. the weather is cold. So you want to in eat internally food. When it's hot at the height of the summer, you should be, ju be juicing a lot of vegetables, but not extend the juicing period to different uh, seasons like fall. Right. When yeah. they're, you know, when, when fruits and veggies are more in season, they make more sense. Your body has more enzymes to, to digest them. Uh, I know a girl who was doing a Instagram uh, and she was like a smoothie expert and she was promoting this lifestyle on, on Instagram and she had like huge following and we were, okay, I can't talk about the venue because like, I don't want to give away her, um, identity or anything like that. But after we were talking about the, uh, the, the health, whatever event that we did, she came to me and called me and saying, you know, she's trying to get pregnant and she couldn't. Right, and I'm like, so what are you doing with your diet? It's like, oh, Tay, do you know, you don't follow my Instagram. I'm a smoothie expert, so I'm just like, all right, let me look it up. And then I was like, wow, she's got a lot of followers. Oh my god, she's a smoothie. I'm like, do you eat smoothies every day? I'm like, I have to. It's my Instagram account. I'm like, oh okay. And here's this girl who is drinking smoothies, and she's got so many smoothie recipes, and she should be super healthy. She was young in her like you know mid twenties. And she's trying to get pregnant, and she couldn't. And I was like, she's eating too much cold food mm -hmm. throughout the whole year because mm -hmm. she's promoting this lifestyle of... And I was trying to tell her, and, like, you see the resistance, you know, <laughs> like, like, like like this mental block. Because I'm telling her, like, you got to put... Um, so I was not telling her to give up the lifestyle of smoothies. You got to balance that with sm smoothies and soups during the winter. So you got to be like maybe smoothie and bone broth. And then she was all about that. Yeah, I would that. say animal, animal products. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she just, you know, eventually changed. Uh, but I think giving the few life tips that she did, because when you're constantly eating cold foods, you, dis you destroy your digestive system. Mm -hmm. Or exclusively plant foods a lot of a lot of plants especially when they're not in season like uh unripe fruit they have plenty of digestive enzyme inhibitors yeah and you won't be able to digest them very well you'll find yourself belching or passing a lot of gas it's because of those enzyme inhibitors and um i was gonna mention something else it's too early mm. i was gonna mention another thing but i lost it i'm too tired <laughs> <laughs> what is that um Okay, so we got the basic food concept, mm -hmm. right? We got what to avoid, lifestyle. Um, is there any supplements that you would take for increasing your testosterone? Um, it's now I remember what I was gonna say. It's not exactly a supplement. Okay. But um, raw honey has raw been honey. directly linked to increasing levels of serum testosterone. I made a TikTok on this. I okay. think. Okay. Okay. There's a really good study. It's been directly linked to it. Uh, ashwagandha has been shown to improve testosterone in some men and not others. So if you would like to experiment with it, there's really no downsides of it. Um, like the ashwagandha, in my professional yeah. opinion. Uh, so when you take a big uh, sample of people and test an herb, right? And you're doing their blood work before and after. Oftentimes, uh, that herb won't work for a specific amount of population. 
Uh, that's because a, in my professional opinion, they're depleted. Their body needs it mm -hmm. like right away, right? So they're gonna use whatever material to make mm -hmm. certain things, and not testosterone because they're more depleted than the other men. And while other men, healthier men, when they take it, their body doesn't need it, so it's gonna make other things. Yeah, and, and ashwagandha has also been shown to. Uh you can actually build up a tolerance to it. So if you take it every day, yeah. it won't work as well. If, if you're someone that it works for, but if you know space it out maybe three times a week, uh, it'll continue to be effective. Uh, any other supplements? I don't remember the name of one, but I saw it on a Huberman episode. Does he have an episode on, on testosterone? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Gotta check and that they out. have a, he, he talks about a few supplements. But I think a lot of it comes down to lifestyle. Yeah. A supplement would kind of be like putting a band-aid yeah. instead of, you know, fixing the root cause. Yeah. Um, so to kind of change your lifestyle around that will definitely have a better effect than a supplement. Of, like, yeah, that's like, you know, what I think Nikki is trying to say is that if you're eating like McDonald's and all those things and you're taking a supplement to lose weight, that's not going to work, right? Yeah. You got to do the work yeah. of like that's changing your lifestyle. That's a good example. That's a good example. Yeah, you got to change your lifestyle. So if you want to increase testosterone, uh, I, I think, you know, I think that's why we focused on not on like, oh, get this supplement sponsored. You buy, you know, this company and talk about the science behind it is like you change your lifestyle around it. So the first thing you want to do is, you know, make these changes, stop buying these things and, you know, uh, gear towards that. Then if you add it, you'll get more bang for your buck. Mm -hmm. Right. And chances are you'll save more money. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like colognes are very expensive from what I understand. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and uh, essential oils are a lot cheaper and you could use a lot less. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I know I have a friend who makes a spray bottle, right? And they put the different things and then they do that. Uh, I have a friend who um, uses soap, right? He makes he mixes Dr. Bronnen soap uh, and he mixes with essential oils, right? So after he washes up, he sprays that and he just like lightly washes it off. And then he carries that scent wherever he goes. So like some people have these like cool rituals that they do to, you know, promote this healthy lifestyle that mm -hmm. they do and uh, yeah like i think you and i are actually people who uh are living this lifestyle right? we're like we're like the lab rats for everyone else <laughs> who is that i saw a um youtube video of um ben greenfield like he was taking a flight but the dude was wearing like i, I saw like a emf, EMF jacket, jacket. <laughs> Like an EMF necklace. I've seen that. EMFs, I've been shown to be pretty bad for your testosterone as well. If I know I'm going to have my phone in my pocket for yeah. a long time, yeah. I'll put it on airplane mode. Like in class, I, I don't want to get notifications and be distracted anyway. Yeah. But I have my phone in my pocket for maybe like an hour and a half straight. Yeah. So I'll put my phone on airplane mode okay. so the EMFs aren't just like right against my right, right, testicles right. or my leg. I repolarize my uh, phone. So like the... It doesn't, it's not an EMF blocker, right? Uh, however, it repolarizes the phone. So when, I, when you touch the phone and hold and do the muscle testing, m like 10 out of 10 people, they'll yeah. always test weak. But if you do they sell phone, like EMF blocking cases and stuff? Because I would do. definitely they buy do. one. I would definitely buy um, one. But what I do is I repolarize my phone, meaning that the wavelength that comes mm. into the body, it has a positive effect on my mm. body. And if you do muscle testing before and after, the phone like you know gives you a health effect mm -hmm. instead of having a bad effect if you're not having it. So I'll, I'll yeah, help you with that. Yeah, definitely, 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 definitely. All right, so we covered a um, lifestyle uh, changes on testosterone. So um, just remember all the things that we talk about here is. Our opinions opinions and advice so do not take it as medical advice and please consult your medical advisor and take it from there and we look forward to our next episode next week and nikki and i will be here for the next four five six mm -hmm. weeks while linda's doing her yoga training so uh mention in the comments or anything like that questions questions like that or any topics you would like us to cover mm -hmm. we'd be happy to respond and until next time Bye-bye, everyone.